This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship at San Marcos Lutheran Church as we celebrate the festival of Pentecost, the festival of the Holy Spirit. Whoever you are and wherever you are sheltering in faith, you are not alone. We are celebrating Holy Communion this festive day. I invite you to find some bread or a cracker as well as some juice or wine. So later on, you'll have that available. If you would like to join us in communion, you will be invited to do so at that time. Many thanks for your continued gifts and offerings, those gifts that make our ministry possible. We're so grateful for your generosity. If you wish to uh, download a PDF for the service, it's on our webpage. And there's also a donation tab on the webpage if you'd like to donate directly through that. God's blessings. Prelude is based on a hymn by Martin Luther that he actually revised from the ancient chant, Veni Creator Spiritus. This is often sung at ordinations. The, uh, the chorale tune is presented by Bach in a rather uh, simple fashion, except for one thing. It has a series of three eighth notes in the accompaniment. But for each of the three eighth notes, when he got to the third eighth note, Bach put in a pedal note. And it's well known that Bach uh, read a lot of symbolism into his music. He was a devout Lutheran, and so that third eighth note represents the third person of the Holy Spirit, or the, or the Trinity, rather, excuse me. Amazing. Thank you, Randy.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson comes from Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound of a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at the sound of the crowd gathered, at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of them heard speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astounded, they asked, Are not all who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we, here, each of us, our own native language, Parthians and Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing among the eleven, uh, the eleven raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. comes 
comes from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, and to another the gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these things are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were made to drink of the one Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. According to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When it was evening on the first day of the week, and that was Easter evening, and though the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked because they were afraid of the Judeans, even so Jesus came and stood among them, and he said to them, Peace be with you. Shalom be with you. And after this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced at seeing the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with life anew, that we may love the way you love and do what you would do. Amen. Amen. It's Pentecost. A day to inhale, a day to breathe deeply into the spirit of life, the spirit of God. Truth be told, we've all got to breathe. We all need to breathe. And the good news is, the dream of God is that the, God has this dream for all of God's children to breathe. God wants us to breathe. And more than that, to start breathing together. Yet what happens when you can't catch your breath, when you can't breathe? During this time of global pandemic, we've come to learn the deadly facts of, of COVID-19. It can literally take your breath away. As someone told me who's recovered from the virus, it's as if someone reached into her body and, and grabbed her lungs. We've hit the grim milestone this week of over 100,000 deaths in, in the United States. A terrible statistic. Yet beyond the statistic, the numbers are the stories of those human beings, real people, who were once all daughters and sons. Now maybe they were spouses or parents or grandparents. Maybe you know some of their stories. I've heard some. No one can know them all. But God knows them. God knows and loves them and God cares. And God weeps. We know that 
COVID-19 can make it difficult or impossible to breathe, but what are some of the other ways where we're not able to breathe? When you go swimming and you're underwater, you make a dive and you hold your breath. You hold your breath as long as you can until you have to come up for air. And I'm never comfortable being under there too long. And I, I love to have the relief of getting my head above water so I can breathe because it feels so good to breathe. We talk about being underwater, though, in other, other ways, namely when we're financially unstable, right? Insecure, we talk about being underwater. Do you know what that feels like? Well, it, it's no fun. It's uncomfortable, it's anxious, so we get constricted. And I've known folks who have been homeless and maybe temporarily homeless sleeping in their cars, and they tell me, you know, I can't catch my breath. They can't breathe. And God weeps. God sighs. This festival of Pentecost, we are remembering once again that the Holy Spirit is a spirit that comes to us to make life worth living. And not because it dwells somewhere out there beyond us or beyond our lives, but because it breathes life into our lungs. We've all got to breathe. The Holy Spirit is not otherworldly. It's as close to us as the breath that we take into our lungs and the breath that we share in common. It's as reviving as the breath that comes, the breeze that comes into a sick room, or it's as vital as a wind blowing across a sky where you can see the white clouds going across a beautiful blue sky, and you're open to possibilities, and it makes life worth living. See, without that kind of experience, we never have the word ruah. (laughs) Because it takes breath to say ruah. It's a Hebrew word for breath and wind and spirit. But it takes breath to say ruah. God's breath blew upon creation, calling creation to life. God came then to intimately breathe life into the first human being's lungs, air, and brought us to life. The spirit that comes as a mighty wind on that Pentecost, the disciples couldn't keep it out of the room. It blew into the room and it blew life on all people, people of every culture. Did you hear that reading from Acts, Medes and Parthians and Phrygia, people from Pamphylia and Egypt and Rome? You see, it was a multicultural mix. People from all over the world. It was beautiful, multicultural, mixed people of every land, every culture, every race. That's God's dream of shalom. God's dream of peace. God's dream of justice. As we pray in the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven's doing just fine with or without us. But God's Our prayer is that God's kingdom, God's agenda comes in and through us here on this earth so that every child of God can breathe and live without fear. We've all got to breathe. This week we saw again and again that horrific video of of George Lloyd pleading for his life with the words, I can't breathe. I can't breathe as the very breath was being choked out of him. Horrific. And it's even a personal story for me since this took place in the neighborhood where my close family members live. It's their neighborhood. My sister sent me pictures last night of debris that had blown into her house from the fires, into her yard from the fires last night. And all the things running through my mind All the overwhelming emotions and the prayers for the safety of all God's children there. It struck me, you know, when I thought about it, would I have been treated the same way as George was? No. Because I'm a white male. I've never been concerned for my life on the occasions when I've been stopped by officers in a police car. Never. Because of my white male privilege. God weeps for George Lloyd and his family with sighs too deep for words. God weeps at the violence 
bubbling up in our cities across the United States. God weeps that evil people have conspired to use this tragic event to come to the state of Minnesota from other places all over the country to come there and create chaos for their own selfish purposes. God weeps. And God weeps for so many of other gods of God's children that are lost because of racial hate. In the light of the death of George Lloyd this week, we've seen again pictures of so many African American men who've also lost their lives where racism and white supremacy was a factor. God knows each and every one of their stories intimately, and God weeps. You see, God wants simply all of God's children to breathe, to live lives of abundant love. That's God's dream, that spirit that's poured out for the old and the young, for rich and poor, for men and and women, so that we can all dream this dream and join in proclaiming that, yes, everyone, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone, no qualifications. I've been thinking this past week of what I need to do to be the change that God wants me to be. How can I, as a white male, be a person of change? What can I do? I read this reflection from an African-American writer. He started by looking at the gospel story where the crowds were protecting Jesus from his enemies, the religious officials, the, the big shots who didn't want him to feed the poor, bring good news And they protected him so he could continue to feed people and heal people and bring good news to the poor. And the writer challenges white Americans like me in his words to be the crowd for black people around you, to be the crowd who does your personal work to learn and digest what anti-blackness is, to be the crowd who actively resists white supremacy as an anti-racist leader in society in our organizations, to be the crowd who resists police brutality and state violence by not being a bystander to injustice, to be the crowd who sees black people as more than our music or our food or our style or our brilliance, but as human beings created by God and worthy of our protection, one who shows empathy, offers solidarity and support for the initiatives black people are seeking for themselves. You see, what if the church, my friends, the body of Christ could live into our calling to be the crowd for the oppressed so that every child of God can simply breathe, breathe in the breath of life. That's the work of the Spirit. Imagine that a relevant, a vibrant church truly being the living, breathing body of Christ. You know what that's called? It's called conspiring. That's what that word means. It means breathing together. We've got some conspiring to do for the good. We've got to breathe together or we will die. And I know that I can't make anyone else do this hard work. But I do know that I can take responsibility for me. I've got some work to do. Yet in the light of the events of this past week, I've committed to do the hard work as long as I have breath. How about you? My friends, the good news is God will keep coming, keep coming to breathe new life into us when we think that we're dead. God keeps coming with this breath of life because God wants all God's children to breathe. Did you hear the gospel? The risen one breaks down the walls and doors to come into that room with his frightened friends to show them that God is alive. The resurrection is real. Jesus lives to bring peace, God's dream of shalom. That's the reality. And the risen one doesn't just show them his wounds. He breathes life into their lungs. He breathes on them, the risen one, this breathes the spirit of life on those frightened disciples so that they can breathe again. Don't forget to breathe, my friends. You are going to forgive one another. You're going to be the instruments of reconciliation God wants us to be because of this spirit of life. You will show lives 
Show the way to live the wor- in this world and show the world that the way we live matters. That everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. There's no exceptions, no exceptions to race, culture, gender, color, sexual orientation. It doesn't matter. God simply wants all of God's children to breathe. At the end of a heartbreaking, gut-wrenching week, it came to me. You know, I'm grateful just to be able to breathe, just to breathe, to breathe in and out the spirit of life, God's Holy Spirit. And when we dare to breathe together, that's power. As followers of Jesus, we're given that power, the power to conspire together for the good, to breathe together for the good, remembering that each breath we take Remembering with each breath that God wants all of God's children to breathe.
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and in all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, your spirit knows no boundaries. All are within your care. You see all things. You reach out to all people. And you love us equally. Let us make this our life's purpose, to love the way you love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you give to us your peace. And your peace is a peace of justice. We pray that you will forgive us, that we may receive your peace and extend your shalom throughout all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Jesus, because you love us, we come before you now with ourselves, our loved ones, our situations, and those around us who need your healing, your help, and your peace. These that we pray for now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray for Cliff and Linda, Christine, James, Evie, and Barbara. We pause to pray now for all who are ill, for all who have lost loved ones, for all who put themselves in harm's way by caring for the sick or keeping our chains supplies open. for all who are working on a vaccine or for cures, for all who govern during these devastating times. Lord, in your mercy. And Jesus, we pray that we will examine our attitudes, our prejudices, and our actions towards those who are different from us. We pray for your wisdom, guidance, and honesty over the incident in Minneapolis and around our nation, and the way that we treat our immigrant, asylum-seeking, and refugee population. We remember that you, our brown-skinned Savior, the one who gave everything up for us, that you are the Savior of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all the parts of the world undergoing civil unrest, due to the coronavirus situation or other reasons. And we pray for all who are facing homelessness, hunger, and lack of medical care. Help us to see that each of these is our neighbor and to show and show us how to be of help. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Holy Spirit, be with our bishops, Elizabeth and Andy, and be with us, the people of San Marcos Lutheran Church. Help us to be bold in our generosity bold in our seeking of opportunities for evangelism and outreach, mindful of our words and actions, and open to ways that your Spirit will guide us. Lord, in your mercy, with bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we, pray, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We invite you now to turn to those around you and share the peace of Christ with them, or take a moment and text someone or pray for someone with whom you wish to share God's peace. The peace of Christ be with you, Randy. And also with you. The peace of Christ be with you, Pastor David. And also with you. The peace of Christ be with you, James. And also with you. We now are preparing for the celebration of Holy Communion. You may want to have your wine, bread, or juice ready now. The Lord be with you. 
and also you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty God. And merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting us in one people, in every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels, archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. into being, and by a pillar of fire you led your people into freedom. We praise you for the gift of your Son, who poured out your Spirit on his disciples of every race and nation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks, and broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and the sending of his holy and life-giving spirit, we await his coming again to renew the face of the earth. Send your Holy Spirit now upon us, and upon this meal, anoint us with your gifts of faith and hope and love, that we, with thankful hearts, may be witnesses to your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we pray that your agenda of shalom will be our agenda as well. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. At this time, we invite you to share Holy Communion with those around you. If you are communing alone, then we say to you, the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. May the one who brought Jesus forth from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
just as he said, go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.